The latest Guild Wars 2 Living World update came out with a new gameplay mode called Dragon Response Missions. These are basically open world events isolated into 5 player instances. You have the option to go into a public group, which is basically a random queue. You have the option to do them with a pre-made group of 5, or you can just solo them because of the locked scaling once the mission has begun. Initially, there was a lot of criticism for these instanced events because they were either too easy or just not enough content. First of all, there is never enough content in a Living World episode because that is the nature of episodic content. Once the full picture is there, it will make sense altogether, but when players are consuming content as soon as it's published and have completed everything else, it's going to look small in size to them. You have to look at the bigger picture, which is this. Before Dragon Missions, each Living World episode released Strike Missions. Strike Missions are also instanced content, but designed for 10 players and revolve around only a boss encounter. Most of the bosses in these Strike Missions are waiting for you to come kill them for no apparent reason and no story. They just stand still in the center of the room and have a few attacks that deal damage but generally can be ignored because a 10 man squad will have enough support to make a raid damage trivial. These strike missions were supposed to be the stepping stone to raids but the only thing they do is reinforce the tendency for people to tunnel vision on golem DPS rotations and ignore mechanics and positioning which can be fleshed out so much more in the Guild Wars 2 combat system. You might get used to raids by stacking on top of each other and playing a role, but otherwise you're not learning much from strike missions. Dragon response missions on the other hand are how games should be played. There's a story to them. The dragon Primordus is waking up and the destroyers are the dragon's minions which represent the imminent threat and presence of Primordus. In the episode's plot, there are many different conflicts interacting with each other. The other dragon, Jormag, is also a threat, but we are given a tough choice to ally with either Jormag in order to take out Primordus, who as Timey states, is a much greater threat because, I mean, just look at our villages being burned down by the minions. Or with Bram, who knows the threat of Jormag as well, and tries to convince us not to ally with Jormag despite the clear threat of Primordus because Bram has dealt with Jormag personally and knows the manipulation at hand. The Asura wish to side with Jormag because they lost their homelands to Primordus personally and Jormag doesn't really mess with them anyways. The Norn are very reluctant to side with Jormag because Jormag is the main reason the Norn had to flee south in the first place. Our player character even agrees with Bram that the cost of allying with Jormag may not be worth it, but we're forced to go with the politics because we need to act now and don't have time for a plan. That's the basis of simple but effective storytelling. You have two conflicts, an immediate danger or threat that catalyzes a personal or historical conflict from the past. This also creates tension which makes it more immersive. If you've ever watched a show and thought that something wasn't realistic because it happened too fast, it's probably because they didn't layer the conflict enough and one event didn't seem to follow from the last. Dragon Strike missions are the precursor to shifting our armies from the Jormag front to the Primordus front, and we are the first responders. In terms of gameplay, the missions could definitely be more interactive. But that's a balance issue. If we said the same thing for strike missions, you can't really fix them with balance because they're insufficient in complexity. The only difference between the Bone Skinner strike mission and the Ice Elemental strike mission is that one has AoEs that do no damage and one has AoEs that kill you. The only difference is balance or how punishing it is, not how many more mechanics are offered to you. I do want to qualify this and say that the Whisper of Jormag Strike mission is very well designed, so more like that would be great. On the other hand, you have Dragon Response missions, 
which have multiple scalings and difficulty settings to provide a more interactive experience. They are about progressing through a map and dealing with a variety of different enemies. Not only do you need to have AoE to handle the small groups of mobs, but you need single target damage to kill the boss. Also, the objectives are spread around, giving players the option to split up or stick together. If you're in an instance that is scaled to 5 players with the challenge mode enabled, and you try to take on that pack of destroyers in the corner by yourself, you're going to need to have good positioning, sustain, or other tools to handle the burns and bursts from the harpy destroyers. You're taught to position and react to the enemy, or you are taught to stick with your group for support. In the case of dragon missions, you are choosing to stick together, whereas in strike missions, you only stack up because there's nowhere else to stand anyways. It's a much more interactive experience, especially because it's 5 players and not 10. I really feel that 10 player instance content removes too much of the player autonomy. If you mess up in a 10 player group, you usually have someone to cover for you. In a 5 player group, it can also punish you very minimally, but you see the result of your actions more clearly. Let's be honest. If dungeons scaled up to current power creep and had challenge modes, and maybe decent rewards, you'd see many players running them. But since dungeons have become outdated and no longer supported, everyone plays fractals now. Don't get me wrong, I love fractals, but they're very limited in what they can do because they can never be part of the current plot since it's just a vision of the past. Dungeons can provide this more intimate group experience that fractals give while also existing at a tangible location in the open world and be relevant to the current living world story. After so many years since the Aetherblade path of the Twilight Arbor dungeon was released, I still stand by it as one of the best PvE additions to the game. Another criticism I feel is misunderstood is that the maps are reused so it's not fully tailored new content. While it is nice to get new maps every Living World episode, that's because the maps are just so well done. I also think it takes away from the meaning of the maps to not have a real reason to go there, other than because we need one every episode. Every map feels like a theme park ride instead of one seamless world if we just go about designing one map every episode. And while the maps are all isolated instances, it doesn't mean that they can't feel seamless and create one big open world. Going back to older maps gives them more meaning and it just feels more natural because the map was not designed for the event. The event was designed for the map. I hope more living world episodes return to older maps and according to that shaman who is a well-known data miner, more missions will occur in more maps. So that's not only nice but confirms that this is also a case of people reacting too quickly. Also, once you level up the mastery more, you will get extra rewards, making them more lucrative the more you level up. So it seems like people may have underestimated how valuable this new game mode is. Sure, there are some issues with the dragon response missions, but those can always be changed. If the challenges are too easily, they can just simply reduce the time allowed to beat the challenge, forcing more risky strategies like splitting up. Another issue is that creating a group in the LFG category for Ice Brood Saga Champions requires a raid, whereas joining the mission requires a party, so you have to group up as a raid and then reform as a party to enter. The LFG category should probably allow parties. And as always, there will be differing levels of player skill involved here. Of course, if top players using optimal meta comps enter into the challenge mode, they will still destroy it. Civilization designers Soren Johnson and Sid Meier once said, Given the opportunity, players will optimize the fun out of a game. So how should the designers protect players from themselves? Maybe they can reduce the power creep that allows you to trivialize content? Maybe that's a topic for another time. What do you guys think? I personally really enjoy dungeons and I think that dragon missions are moving towards that kind of content that was more meaningful, to me at least. And I think it's a lot better for teaching players how the game works and 
how to learn their class because you can fit the puzzle piece in differently based on your small group composition. And let me know what you guys think in the comments below. So if you like the video, like it and subscribe for more, and I'll see you next one.